yes cells are of different structures yeah and so they are having different functions and also that functions depends upon the changes of the structures of the cell so when we are recalling this that how have these living organisms been classified so from here we will start that cells are what cells are the building block material for all the living organisms as living organisms includes different varieties of types for example uh, plants animals bacteria fungi and these are all of unicellular multicellular organisms are also of different types that is of unicellular or multicellular so for this there is a need of classification yes to study them in detail if we are taking one common example that is as we are knowing i am a teacher and you are the student yeah when we are going to school students and teachers we are going for taking lectures and you when students they are going for learning and to study yeah so what we are doing we are not going in a mob or not we are sitting in a same hall means all eight students all teachers are not in the same hall what we have decided what our school infrastructure is that the students and teachers means only students are divided on the basis of their ages yeah so that they can get the particular materials for studying and we are there for the particular classes so that we can record your performances and we should also be able to explain all the basic uh, of the subjects which are needed according to your age so in the same way in the same way this classification of plants is also needed as we are knowing in our environment there are many 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 different types of uh, plants animals many many things are there so for this what happens the classification is divided into a five kingdom yeah so as we have studied that the kingdoms monera protista and fungi of the five kingdom classification system was proposed by what by whom by robert whitaker in 1959 yes in 1959 for what for the study of a living organism yes students so who is the scientist or who is the person who has proposed this to divide this all the things into five kingdom he was a robert whitaker and in which year in which year he has discovered this in 1969 so now what are the hidden secrets of this kingdom which impart this yes and just now we are knowing that how much diversity is there in this kingdom let us see now organisms are of different types two types that is prokaryotic and eukaryotic prokaryotic means what where the cells are having no membrane and eukaryotic it is having well defined nuclear membrane yes this is the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic now in prokaryotic prokaryotic it is divided into a monera what it is it is monera and eukaryotic means as it is having cell membranes and all it is divided into two types that is unicellular and multicellular in unicellular protista is coming with the cell wall yes and in multicellular without cell wall okay so in protista it is with the cell wall and it is divided into two different parts that is fungi and the plantae now to whom we will called as a fungi that do not perform photosynthesis means what who are they heterotrophs means who are not having chlorophyll yes and second one is plantae means what which kingdom it is plantae so these are the divisions not kingdom it's a division that is plantae so uh, it, uh, these are the they are able to perform photosynthesis and they are called as a autotroph they are called as a 
autotrophs who can perform the process of photosynthesis means who can who are able to make their own food yes so this is the classification of the living organism so what are the main five kingdoms monera protista animalia fungi then plantae yes students now see this in this picture what you are seeing the two pictures are of one is of eukaryotic second one is of prokaryotic see in the picture of eukaryotic there is a presence of nuclei then nuclear cells then mitochondria is present ribosomes is present endoplasmic reticulum is present reticulum is present means these are the cell organelles so these are what they are eukaryotic cells so they can be unicellular or multicellular but see in this prokaryotic there is nucleus nucleoid but there is no cell membrane yes there is no nucleus membrane means it is not there is not a cell membrane or a nuclear membrane in it so it is called as a prokaryote understood what is eukaryote and what is prokaryote now the next is now we will see only the introduction of this the in kingdom monera see this picture kingdom monera now what is the word mean monera monera means a single what it is it is a single means it is a unicellular organism having a prokaryotic cell and what it is examples its example is bacteria what it is it's bacteria and in this there is no other cell organelles is in picture you are able to see there is cytoplasm there is nucleus dna ribosomes capsules is there a cell wall is there plasma membrane is there and there is a bacterial flagellum also is there yeah so in this monera it all includes the what bacteria what is the example of this so our kingdom monera it's a bacteria and what is the meaning of the word monera it is single understood so these are the unicellular organism okay now we will move further this is the kingdom protista where it comes in the unicellular it is a eukaryote is example of eukaryotic yeah so in this see we have seen this nucleus is seen membrane is also there the chloroplast is you are able to see there is a contractile vacuole photoreceptor yes but in this what is this when we are saying this kingdom protista what is the meaning of the word protista it a uh, meaning is very first what it is very first and this protista kingdom it is very hard to classify why because it is having the characters of others too means others means what they can be heterotrophs they can be heterotrophs they are having some extension yeah so that so it is said to be as that it is a protistan so it is called as the very first its meaning is the very first yeah now when we will we are able to see this big kingdom fungi yes now in rainy seasons we see the most of this mushroom yeah mushrooms we are see and this is the in this we only see the fungus what only the fungus this is the kingdom fungi they are and they are called also as a heterotroph because they are not having chlorophyll in it and so they cannot perform their photosynthesis so they are also called as a heterotroph yes now this kingdom plantae it is most vast why because in our environment we see many 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 different types of plants in our nature yes so and in this kingdom plantae they are called as what they are called as a autotroph because in this what it is there is a presence of chlorophyll and so this kingdom plantae in this the plants which are included they are able to perform the process of photosynthesis and they are able to make their own food yes students you are understanding me yes so and one more is there that is kingdom animalia the word only suggests that in this kingdom all the different animals are included yes and as we are knowing they are not able to make their own food but they are dependent on this plants and various animals 
so these are the five different kingdoms now in the in very short we have the seen this chart you can understand see kingdoms are given monera protists fungi plants and animals plants means plantae and animals means animalia now when we used to see that in monera number of cells it is of unicellular yeah monera it is a unicellular prokaryotic uh, not prokaryotic it is a protista it is unicellular or pluricellular pluricellular means what it is a uh, same as a multicellular fungi it is also having unicellular or pluricellular but in plant plants means plantae it is a most pluricellular means it is a multicellular cell it is having multicellular cell and in animals it is also pluricellular means it is also of a multicellular cell yes now which type of cells are present in this in kingdom monera it is a prokaryotic prokaryotic means no membrane then protista fungi plantae and animalia they are having eukaryotic cell means the well they are having well defined nuclear membrane yes now what about the tissues tissues means all the cell organelles and the things which are performing the functions in this uh, just like the xylem phloem and all but in monera and protista and fungi there is an absence of this tissues they are without tissues but in plantae and animalia they are having this tissue yes now what type of nutrition we are seeing in this kingdom in monera they are showing autotrophic and heterotrophic both in protista also they are performing heterotrophic and heterotrophic they are in fungi they are totally heterotrophic yeah they are heterotrophic means they are not able to make their own food but in plant in kingdom plantae they are autotroph means they are able to make their own food yeah they are not dependent on any other in animalia they are heterotroph as they are not able so they are dependent on the plant now what are the examples of this kingdom in monera kingdom monera what is the example bacteria protista example is algae protozoa yes in fungi what is the example seed mold fungi that form mushroom yes what are the examples of plantae there are many moss ferns plants with flowers yes many are there in animals in the uh, functions is of uh, animalia there are, what are the examples they are invertebrate and vertebrate understood students these are the examples of this five kingdom now when we are moving to the now today we are seeing the kingdom plantae the one question arise in our mind that which are the special cell organelles that differentiate plant cells from animal cells now what what are the different cells as we are knowing that the group of autotrophic living organisms having eukaryotic cells with cell walls is the group of plant yes means in the eukaryotic cells with cell walls is present yeah plants have become autotrophic as they can form photosynthesis with the help of chlorophyll so this kingdom plantae the example which are here they can perform photosynthesis and the for main what is the main one that living organisms of the kingdom plantae are the main source of food for all other living organisms yes what are this means this plantae these are the main source of food for all living organisms yes we also eat uh, plants fruits and all so in the same way all other organisms are also dependent on this uh, plant so main source of the food for all the living organisms yeah now on which basis this classification has done what are the uh characteristics or what are the fundies were there for what this uh, for what the this the classification has been taken to so first one is <clears throat> on the basis of the presence or absence of organs 
in the first criterion for classification of plants <coughs> what is the first that presence or absence of organ now in plants what are the organs that they are flower fruit seed all this yes so first one is the presence or the absence of organ now what is the second one the presence or absence of separate conducting tissues for conduction of water and food is the next consideration for classification now here what is the uh, present or separate conducting tissues here tissues means xylem and phloem which is present in the plant in which xylem what is the function of xylem it is for the conduction of water and what is the function of phloem it has to supply the food to all over the part of the body of the plant yes so this one is the second consideration and yes we do we know that do the plant bear seeds if they do then whether the seeds are enclosed in a fruit or not is also an important criterion for the classification as we are knowing this plant also produce seeds but now if the plant is having seeds but what is the next question that seeds are enclosed in a fruit or not so on this basis also the classification has done and finally the plants are grouped depending upon the number of cotyledons in the seed as we are knowing the plants are of monocotyledon dicotyledons and they are having two right yes this on this basis also the classification has also be done at the higher levels of plant classification different characteristics are also considered for classification for example depending upon the absence or presence of flowers fruits and seeds plants are classified as a cryptogam or the phanerogam so depending upon whether the seeds are enclosed within a fruit or not phanerogams are classified as gymnosperms and angiosperms and angiosperms are further classified as monocots or dicots depending upon the number of cotyledons in the seed so what are the main basis the first one is the presence or absence of organs organs here when seeds flowers and all fruits and all second presence or absence of separate conducting tissues then third one is seeds are present or absent fourth if seeds are present then they are enclosed in fruits or not it's also be on the basis of number of cotyledons and then in higher plants it depends on absence or presence of flowers or fruits and seeds on this basis the classification has taken place now this classification of kingdom plantae yes now how this are divided what which one the plant kingdom the plant kingdom plantae kingdom is divided into two kingdom two sub kingdom that is cryptogamia and the phanerogamia now what is cryptogamia cryptogamia is plants without flower and what is phanerogamia plants with flower like structure or flower now what is cryptogamia those plants in which reproductive organs are not visible that is not arranged in flower like structure as we are knowing in plants which is the reproductive part it is a flower so if, if there is no presence of flower there is no uh, reproductive organ in the cryptogam and in phanerogam those plants in which reproductive organs are arranged in flower or flower like structure simple now this cryptogam is divided into a three subdivision that is thallophyta bryophyta and peridophyta this phanerogam is divided into two that is gymnosperm and geosperm gymnosperms means flower like structure and angiosperm means they are real flower but today in our today session we will going to see in brief the three sub division of the cryptogam that is thallophyta bryophyta and peridophyta now moving further to this now first thing now what is the cryptogam in this word cryptogam what is this in this word crypto means hidden what is hidden and what do you mean by gamete it's 
to marry. Yes, means in this word cryptogam. This is the when we divide these two terms in this word, the crypto means hidden and gamma means to marry. So these are the plants which are produced by spores. These are the plants which are produced by spores, and in this there is no seed, no production of seed. So there will be uh, no what? There will be no reproduction. Yes, students. Now moving further. Now. Classification of such kingdom cryptogam. It is for three types. Three subdivisions are there: Thallophyta, Bryophyta, and Pteridophyta. Yes, students. Up till here, you understand this that cryptogam. These are the plants which are produced by spores. What by spores and not by seeds or flowers. Just now I explained that cryptogam. In cryptogam, the crypto word means. Hidden and gam which means to marry. Now we will move further. Yeah, that is a thallophyta. Now what is thallophyta? Thallophyta. What do you mean by the thallophyta? Now what are the characteristics of this? See in the picture it is seen. Yeah, this plant grow mainly in water. So as we are knowing the plants or animals which are living in water. They are uh, growing in water. They are called as an aquatic. If plants are there, they are called as aquatic plants. If animals are there, they are said to be as aquatic animals. But in this case, this plants grow mainly in water, so they are called as an aquatic. Now, this group of plants which do not have specific parts like what root, stem, leaves, flowers, but they are autotrophic. Why? Why they are called as an autotrophic? Due to the presence of chlorophyll, see in this picture they are green in color. Yeah, so there is a presence of chlorophyll. So they are called as a autotrophic. And so when this autotrophic due to the presence of chlorophyll, they are called as an algae. And algae show great diversity. Yes, students. They may be unicellular or multicellular, or and it may be microscopic or flat. Yes. So, what are the examples of this algae? Are commonly known that is Pyrogyra, yes, Eulothrix, Ulva, Pergasum, etc. These are the examples of this algae. Means these are the examples of the Thallophyta. Some of these are found in fresh water. Why some are found in saline water? Yes. Some plants they can grow or live in the fresh water, or some are can be found in the saline water. These plants usually have a soft and a fiber-like body. Yes, various types of fungi like yeast and mold, which do not have chlorophyll, are also included in this group. Are also included in this group. Yes, students. Yes. So, what what are the main characteristics of this thallophyta? Mainly, they grows in water. They are called as an aquatic plant. Plant body is thallus type, means that do not have parts like root, stem, leaves, and flowers. They are soft and fiber-like body. They may be unicellular or multicellular. There is a less conduction tissue. Why? There is no presence of xylem and phloem. Six organs are. Unicellular, as there is no flower, they are called they have to be as the unicellular. No zygote formation, as there is no reproductive part that is flower, there is no zygote formation. Here they are produced or they form spores. Yes, and what are the examples of this? Alva, Pyrogyra, Eulothrix, Sargassum, etc. In this fungi like. Yeast and molds are also included in this group. Now, what is this? These are the examples of the thallophyta. First one is the ulva. Yes, it is also see only the see the picture. It is a flattened structure. It is said to be as a lecture. Yeah, these are edible. What ulva means? They are edible. They can be eatable. They we are able to eat. Why? And they are very highly 
protein is there there is a presence of iron in it yeah these are called as an alpha this is the example of cellophyta what is the next one this is a cella it cellus see in the picture only you are able to see they are branch their structure is branch structure and it is mostly attached to the mud yes now next one this is the common example that is spirogyra yeah now in this spirogyra we are able to see the nucleus yes cell wall spiral chloroplast is also there and in this spiral chloroplast we are seeing spironein where what are these spironein it shows the charge yes this is the common example of the cellophyta division that are alva cella and spirogyra yes students up till here you understood this is the first subdivision of the cryptogam that is cellophyta now we will move further with a second one second division that is bryophyta now what is bryophyta this group of plants is called as the amphibian now what are what is this term mean amphibian the uh, living organisms which are able to live on live in water as well as in the land or in the soil they are called as a amphibian so in terms of plants they are called as amphibian of the plant kingdom because they grow in moist soil but need water for reproduction means they grow in the moist soil but they also need water for what for reproduction so these plants are celloid multicellular and autotrophic yes they reproduce by spore formation by spore formation the structure of plant body is how of the bryophyte is flat ribbon like long without true roots stem and leaves means what they are not having true roots they are not having stem they are not having leaves but instead they have stem like or leaf like part and root like rhizoid means they are not having typical stem leaf or root but they are having that type of uh, such things that stem like uh, features or uh, structures are there leaf like parts are there and root they are of in the form of rhizoid they do not have specific tissues for conduction of food and water it means there is absence of xylem and phloem and so what are the examples of this bryophyta the examples of this bryophyta are moss moss is cinerea that is then second one is marchantia anthocyros rishia etc now yes students to whom we will say that these are the uh, plants these are from the bryophyta kingdom or division then what characteristics we will find that first one is they grow in moist soil they they will grow in moist soil but they need water for what reproduction so they are called as what amphibian second plant body is a celloid without true root stem and leaves but they are having root like structures stem like uh, structures and leaves like part yes but as they are not having two roots rhizoids are present there flat ribbon like how is the structure of this bryophyte flat ribbon like long body they are multicellular lack two conditions tissues means there is absence of what xylem and phloem the sex organs are multicellular zygote is formed yes due to with the help of spores then a sexual reproduction by what with the help of this spore formation so what is the example of this marchantia anthocyros rishia etc yes now we will see the pictures of this now see in the first picture it is a picture of cunaria see in this see the green part it is what it is a leaf like part and at the below of this green part see some lines are there they are root like part called as what rhizoid yes and from this leaf like part one stalk is arising and from where a capsule is formed so this is what cunaria okay next one next picture is marchantia here also see the flat body yeah leaf like part is there 
rhizoid is there, stalk is also there, and the capsule is also present. Yes, students. Next one is anthocerot. It is also see there the leaf-like part is also present, and at the top there are capsules with the help of these stalks. The capsules are also present. So bryophytes. They are mostly they are called as the amphibians. Keep in mind. What are the examples of it? Funaria, Marchensia, Anthocerot, and Rhizia. Okay, many more are there, but these three are the most common. Okay, now we will move further. That is for the division number three. That is Pteridophyta. Now, what are Pteridophyta? Plants from this group have well-developed root, stem, and leaves. And separate tissues for conduction of food and water. Yes, but they do not bear flowers and fruit. They reproduce with the help of spores formed along the back or posterior surface of their leaves. Means what? The plants from this group have what? Well developed roots, stem, and leaves. And Separate tissues for conduction of food and water. Means there is a presence of xylem and phloem, but they do not bear what flowers and fruit. So they are called. They are in the uh, which kingdom? Uh, which divisions? That is a cryptogam. Yes or no? Yeah. So they reproduce with the help of what spores formed along where we form. Uh, we have seen this spores in this. Formed along the back or the posterior surface of the leaf. These spores we are found uh, in below the leaf. For this, examples are ferns like Nephrolepis, Marsilia, Radies, Adentium, Equisetum, Salanginella, then Lycopodium, etc. And this plants reproduce asexually by spore formation, by spore formation, and sexually by Zygote formation and they have a well developed conducting system. Means out of the three, Thalophyta, then Bryophyta, Pteridophyta is a proper. Means what? For if for to which plants we can say that these are the division, these plants are from the division Pteridophyta. From which characteristics we can find? The, from the first, see, this plant grows on land. And so they are called as what? Terrestrial. They are called as a terrestrial. They have typical proper roots, stem, and leaves. Well developed body. Yes, as they are having roots, stem, and leaves, so they are having well developed body. They are multicellular plants. They have separate tissues for what? Conduction of food and water. Yes, when xylem and phloem is present in this. Sex organs in this are multicellular. Zygote is also formed in this, yes. But asexual reproduction is done by spores formation. So, what are the examples of this pteridophyta? Ferns like Nephrolepis, Marsilia, Charis, Adentum, Equisetum, Salanginella, and Lycopodium, etc. Yes, students, up till here you are getting me. Now, what are the enough? The, here are the pictures of this example. See, the fern, see this, they are looking typical like a plant. They are having leaf, they are having stem, they are having root. Yes, yes or no? But see, the when see in the next picture, the leaves are having that brown portion. Yeah, so these are what? Orangia and sori on the leaf leg. This brown structure in this, the spores, the sorites are present in this, from which the reproduction process is done. Yes. Next picture is of Salanginella. It is a picture of Salanginella. What it is? It is also a pteridophyte. Yeah. This is also a what? It is a pteridophyta. It is an example of a pteridophyta. Next one is a lycopodium. What it is the lycopodium? It is, it is also showing the same characteristic. See, proper leaves are there. Proper stem and leaves are there. They are also as a terrestrial. They are called as a terrestrial plant. Yes, as they are on the soil. They are the producing or they are uh, growing on the soil. Yes, up till here you understood. So yes, students. Now we will revise all those things. Yes. See, 
in this tabular form. This classification of sub kingdom was cryptogen. What it is? Three divisions. Cryptogen is divided into three types. That is Thallophyta, Bryophyta, and Pteridophyta. Yes. Now, what is a habitat? Habitat means where they grow, how they uh, reproduce. Uh, uh, means they grow. Okay. Now, first one is Thallophyta. What we have seen? Thallophyta. Thallophyta means what? This plant mostly grow in what? Where? In water. So they are called as what? They are called as a aquatic plant. They are called as a aquatic plant. Yeah. Second division, Bryophyta. What is its habitat? It grow in moist soil. They grow in moist soil, but they need water for reproduction. Means they are dependent on both water and soil. So they are called as what? Amphibian. Means bryophyta, bryophytes are called as a amphibian. Now which is the third division? It is a pteridophyta. Means this plant grow on land. They grow on land. So they are called as what? Terrestrial plant. Yes students, up till you understand. Thallophyta. They are called as an aquatic plant. Bryophyte or bryophyta, they are called as an amphibian as they need soil and water both. Third division, that is pteridophyta, they grow on land. So, they are called as an terrestrial. Now, how is their body structure? Now, first one, thallophyta, how is its structure? Plant body is thallus, like they do not have parts like root, stem, leaves and flowers. Yes. So, they have soft and fiber-like body. They are unicellular or multicellular. First of all, we will see the first point that is plant's body is cellular. Do not have parts like root, stem, leaves and flowers. What in case of bryophyte? This plant body is celloid without true root, stem and leaves. They are also seen. But in pteridophyte, they have root stem and leaf. This is the structure of them. Then, in thallophyte, soft and fiber-like body it is. Bryophyte, it's a flat ribbon-like link body. Yes, and pteridophyte, in pteridophyte, they have well-developed body. They have well-developed body. How are the cells in this? Now, in thallophyte, they are unicellular. Or maybe multicellular. In bryophyta, they are multicellular only. Pteridophyta, they are also multicellular. They are having multicellular cells. Now, next one. How is the vascular tissues in this three division? In thallophyta, there is a lack conduction tissue. Means there is a absence of this tissue. That is of xylem and fluid. In bryophyta, they are also same. There is a lack of true conduction tissues. There is no absence of what? Xylem and phloem. But in pteridophyta, what? Separate tissues for conduction of food and water are present. Yes, here yeah, separate tissues are present. Since in, case, in this case, xylem and phloem are present. Now, what about the sex, or sex organs in this? In pteridophyta, sex organs are unicellular. They are unicellular. Bryophyta, sex organs are multicellular. And in pteridophyta also, sex organs are multicellular. In pteridophyta, there is the absence of zygote. Yeah. In bryophyta, zygote is formed. And in pteridophyta also, zygote is formed. Why? Right? Because of the presence of the sex organ. Yeah. Then, here, the reproduction is done here in the form of what? In the thallophyta, spores are formed. What it is? It is spores are formed. In bryophyta, asexual reproduction by the spores formation. Asexual reproduction. In this case, asexual reproduction is taken by the spores formation. In pteridophyta, asexual reproduction is also done by the spores formation only in pteridophyta. So, now, we will move to the examples of this. Now, what is the example of the cellophyta and this? 
it is what example of thallophyta is alva sara pyrogyra elotrix sargassum etc but one more exception is there fungi like eaves and mold also included in this group what are the examples in this alva sara pyrogyra elotrix sargassum etc fungi like eaves and molds are also included in this group now next example of the bryophyta what is the example of the bryophyta moss morkensia anthocyros rishia etc these are the examples of bryophyta then what are the examples of the pteridophyta the examples of the pteridophyta are forms like nephrolepis marsilia charis adiantum yes then equisetum salanginella lycopodium etc up till here you understood in this way we have seen today the kingdom planty how this kingdom planty is divided into cryptogams and gymnosperms then cryptogams is divided into three divisions that is thallophyta bryophyta pteridophyta yes and in the uh, in for the lectures we will be moving to the gymnosperm yeah so now students you are getting na uh, on which basis the classifications has been we are seeing in this lecture that what are the factors which are needed for this classifications are that the presence or the absence of the organ yes this one is the this one is needed then second one is the presence or absence of separate conducting tissues yes for what for conduction of water and food then uh, we have to see that if the plants is bearing seeds so are they enclosed in a fruit or not it is also very important then the plants are grouped depending upon the number of cotyledons in the seed yes how many shells that means they are the seeds are of monocotyledons or monocot or they are dicot yes and at the higher levels of the plant classification different characteristics are considered for the classification for example what depending upon the absence or the presence of flowers fruits and seeds plants are also classified we are seeing just now that cryptogams or phanerogams depending upon whether the seeds are enclosed within a fruit or not Phanerogams are classified as the gymnosperms and the angiosperms. So angiosperms are also further. So on this, all this basis, this classification has been done. Yes, and this classification of kingdom plantae was done by the scientist who is the Eckler in 1883. He was a botanist. Okay, in this way, this classification was done, and in and we are able to what divide all these plants according to their kingdom now we can know that how is the if we if someone has asked what are bryophyta what are thallophyta and which plants comes in pteridophyta we are easily able to give answers yes students so by this i have completed my lecture so i am very thankful to all my dear students 